So hi, um, I'm Heather Tobin. Um, I'm the filmmaker behind Red of Acceptance. Um, Red of Acceptance is my third feature film. Um, my first film I shot back in 2004-2005. And um, I shot it as same-sex marriage was coming into legalization as a federal law in Canada. So it's a pretty cool documentary. Um, it's actually my coming out story. Uh, Gosh, back then I was actually in the closet, or at least I identified as bisexual to some. I'm the gayest kid ever. But I think that's part of the process of coming out, and actually that's why I make the films that I make, because I think it's a coming out is a process. You, like, Especially for my generation, I'll be 32 in April, and you didn't see it. You didn't see it, so if you didn't see it, you didn't know it was a thought that you could have. I always knew I liked girls, but um, I think if you didn't, if you don't get exposed to it and you don't see it growing up, I went to high school, I didn't know one other gay person. Um, I had a girlfriend in college and we didn't tell anybody, and then from there I came back to my hometown of Barrie and I, all my friends are straight, and I was like, where do I go? So <laughs> I was graduated film school and I made my documentary, my first doc. Um, well, my only doc, I, I make lesbian dramas now, but anyways, it's a feature film about same-sex marriage, and it's really cool. Uh, I interviewed the very first couple ever to be married in the whole world, um, and the minister who made it all happen, and the lawyer who had it, who made it all happen. And now Canada is a benchmark for the world. Um, people follow our example, and the rest of the world is trying to legalize same-sex marriage, so... I'm really proud to have been a part of a documentary that explored that way back in 204, 205 when it was just becoming um, a law in Canada. So then my next film, I started filming it in 2006, and it's To Each Your Own, and it's on sale now. It's on sale now, woohoo! Anyways, To Each Your Own's a little lesbian love story, it's a love triangle, but um, Mary Two Young Jess, starring Hannah Hogan. Um, Hannah's a wonderful actor. She's based out of Toronto. She's actually a comedian as well, and she does a lot of work, so you should check out Hannah Hogan. I, don't, I think her website's hannahogan.com, possibly. Anyways, um, and that's To Each Your Own, and now we're on to Route of Acceptance. So uh, this is my newest, most recent film, shot in 210. Takes about two years to edit a movie. Um, I'm one person, so takes me a while, um, and now tweet, uh, sorry, now Red of Acceptance is uh, traveling the Gay and Lesbian Festival circuit, and it's, uh, it's a huge deal, it's, it's awesome. I get to travel around the world and uh, promote my movie, and it's, it feels great. To Each Your Own actually played at about 60 film festivals around the world, and it won a few awards for Best Feature, um, and I hope that Red of Acceptance wins some awards too. Uh, yeah. predictable. I knew you'd be here. What is your problem? My brother fucked with my head and now I don't know what school I'm going to. Just come to Robinson with us. We're gonna miss you if you go anywhere else. Shay, I'm not gonna pick what university I go to based on my social life. Well, you should. At least in Toronto, there's a gay scene. Yeah, I can't wait to get out of this town. It's the, the first script that I've um, read that was written by a woman, which is cool. Um, and I think the I don't know if this is just my experience so far, but I feel like the dialogue is really natural when it comes out of my mouth. And um, uh, I just love the idea of the whole, it's like that sliding doors kind of thing, like what would happen if your life, if you had made this decision over this decision over this decision. Right. That's the premise, what if? What if she chose, there's three paths, right? Everyone's got those. What if? You got a, a moment in time and you could go three different ways. What if I go this way, this way, or this way? How's my life going to turn out? In my opinion, it's all about choice. That nothing is written. Uh, you can try as hard as you like to have everything go as you hope, but we all have these sort of fork-in-the-road decisions to make in our lives. And in Ryan's case, she's got these three major choices and she wants to make the best one for her. But at the end of the day, good things happen and bad things happen no matter which road you take. And that's life. And the reason why I like it so much is because I can't actually just put one premise to it because it goes in so many different directions. And I love that. It's, it, has, it has 
14,000 different paths and so many different things that you can look at and experience and it all kind of boomerangs back to one. The premise of the film um, is on, yes, lesbianism, but it's also on um, all sorts of gender issues, not just um, the lesbianism of the daughter, but the other issues. And it's not just the choices that the daughter makes either that, um, uh, that Ryan makes, it's, it's also about the choices that the other characters make. Um, that's interesting and the effect that it has on them. But I love the idea that it flows through dreams, but it's not dreams, it's reality. So, and, and it leaves you wanting to know which one really, 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 really happened, and yet you're watching a film, and that's what grips you about it, that it's so real that you want to know what, which one she chose, you know. Basically, the idea of the film is um, you kind of, you follow my character, Ryan Stark, through her life and um, it, it starts off and she's kind of, she has these three acceptance letters to three universities and um, the, the film is supposed to, it, it kind of shows you what would happen if she were to choose each university and it's kind of the, it's the whole um, fate versus the lack of fate thing. So do you, is it fate that all of these things are happening in her life? And do you see these recurring things, but then you see all these differences as well throughout the three different realities? Okay, so in one reality, I fall in love with Emily. And Emily is, um, she, she's just come out, so she's new to being a lesbian. Um, well, admitting it to herself anyway. And uh, she's really quirky and rants a ton and is really fun and, and feminine and... Uh, and kind of challenges me, which is awesome. Hunting is just what people do around here. I was 13, I didn't know any better. Well, you don't anymore, do you? No, never. There are real people. They're not um, the butts of jokes. They're not stereotypes, really. Um, they're not anything like, well, let's put this type of person into that box and leave them there because it's easier. It's really exploring uh, the community. And then um, Maddie is, I feel like there's a, a certain seriousness to Maddie and I feel like her character is pretty deep and we have this, this cool relationship on another level. Um, and then she also is very understanding with, with um, things that happen to me in the script. That is not a reflection of my teaching ability. <laughs> okay, okay. So is this some sort of intricate plan to seduce me and get old Demi Moore on my ass? <laughs> no, this is my plan to try to wreck some kind of artistic ability from you. But seeing as how you truly don't have any, you're a lost cause. Well, at least you finally admitted it. When are you gonna realize I'm always right? What drew me to the script is the fact that it's very honest, very relatable. Uh, without being predictable. Um, I think it's really well written, a story that everybody can get down with in some way, and shit, it's entertaining. <laughs> Callie's relationship, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. I think it's going to be a really neat dynamic um, in, that rela in that reality with Callie. Uh, it takes place a few years after the rest of the other ones, the rest of the realities, so uh, we're a bit older and in the professional world, and Callie's very, very businesswoman-esque. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> well, in that case, we have the same favorite color. It's just a life story. Gay, straight, whatever. It's, it's someone's life story. I think that we do definitely need more um, lesbian films in general because um, I don't know of, I know, maybe five that I know of and that's ridiculous because there's like a bajillion trillion movies out there and um, that deal with just about everything under the sun. Um, but for some reason there are like five or six good lesbian films.
She looks straight. She's not straight. This is a gay party. We do a lot of straight people at our parties. We shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go find out? I need another drink. Another juice, Ryan? <laughs> I'm saving you cab money. Don't bitch. I thought it was a very unique script in that um, it was dealing with issues um, that not everyone wants to deal with in a film. Um, and it's, it, it was dealing with issues in not in the most direct way. It wasn't hitting you in the face with, this is my issue and I want you to believe in me. It was just telling a story of real people. It must have been a man who made up title prefixes. I mean, you can't tell if a man's married by his prefix, but you can tell if a woman is. What's up with that? Coming? What is unique about it is the way it's written. <clears throat> that the script is so um, sensitive and real, and yet it's dealing with things that are supposedly not real. And I think that's what is fascinating about it. That's what's unique about it. It's bringing something that might be, may not be, could be, and making it real. For the audience and also it's unique because I don't think there's a person in in this society that won't find themselves in that movie. And if your family isn't as understanding this is definitely something that you'd want to show them because there's a lot of great scenes in the film that just show that your kid is your kid no matter what they are or who they are. When did you propose? Valentine's Day. Yeah, I wanted to tell you guys in person though, so. Valentine's Day. Are you fucking for real? That's so gay. Gay like you. I think everyone should look forward to this film. It's gonna be something that I don't think anyone's really quite seen before. It's different. I think that um, a film like this is, is really essential to not just gay people, but you know, the mainstream media. Because the gay community is a stereotype and it can be easily stereotyped. And the only way that you can get out of that stereotype is to research it and to understand it. And a lot of people don't like to take the time out to do that. <laughs> Dirty, someone's gonna marry your brother? Oh my god, Shay, she's so beautiful. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> that I think we need more films like this is that, that so if we get more and more of them shown to the general population, because a lot of these films are seen by mainly an LGBT, a lesbian, gay, um, queer society who go and see these films because they can relate to them. If the general population goes to see them and are exposed to them, then it will normalize what is already normal, that people don't know is normal because they don't know much about gender issues. And so they fear it. And anything you fear, you back away from. It's educational for uh, for those who kind of, they're not exactly sure of what gay is or the whole community is, you know. So I think that this kind of shows that we're not, we're not different, you know. We're, we want what straight people want. We want love, we want a family, you know, like we want companionship, you know. It's the same as any other GLBT film that's been made and played in festivals for people to see and laugh with, cry with, to feel, to understand it. Um, because in this incredibly imperfect world, uh, it's a pretty beautiful thing that people can get together in a group like this, um, in a festival that's dedicated to a lifestyle that is not fully accepted. Um, and we still have a long way to go, but this is just another step in the right direction, so. Uh, you know, in general conversation, people are always saying, what are you doing, you know, what are you doing now? Anything exciting happening with you? What's going on? And um, it could be anybody, you know, that you meet. So I know <laughs> I have this thing where I'll say to people, oh, actually, um, I'm in a film at the moment. And, uh, and they say, oh, wow, a film, I said, and they'll say, well, what sort of film? What, what, what is the film? Tell me. And I'd say, actually, it, it's, um, it's a lesbian film. And they look at me with this, oh, and they don't know what to say next. 
and their sort of eyes are starting to dart and they look, you know, there's fear of, of you know, you're not going to tell me you're a lesbian, are you? I mean, it's this idea that if you're going to be in a lesbian film, you have to be a lesbian, you know, or if you have anything to do with it at all. And it's really quite funny because they just don't know what to say. Some people just guffaw, laugh out loud immediately because they think it's the funniest thing they've heard. And then other people look at me with this, is she joking or is she not joking? What shall I do now? For lesbian filmmaking, it's just, it, it says something important, I think. And I think it does it in a very entertaining way and a very personal way. And I think a lot of people can connect with that. And I don't think there's a lot of films out there that are like that. People need to need to understand that the gay community is not far from the hetero community and that we can all I'm not going to turn this into some unity bullshit, but that we're not any different than anybody else and that this film I think is very relatable to anybody of any age or gender or you know, sexuality, whatever. I love the character because she loves her kids and she loves them unconditionally and she doesn't see her daughter as anybody but her daughter you know she doesn't see her through the gendered eyes that pe other people will see her um, because that's how I see my my what do I call it trans son you know who is um, used to be my daughter but I don't see him as anything but who he is can you give us a sec You came. Good thing. Can't let you go looking like this. You look beautiful. Uh, I hope I'm doing my character justice. Uh, I do have I have a little sister, um, so I know how that relationship works. She's not gay, but at the same time, I don't think that really matters at all. So. And it doesn't matter where you go to school. What changes you isn't what you learn from your teachers. It's what you learn from your classmates. Life changes you. You're so profound. Yeah, and you're a dyke with a naked man calendar, so don't judge me. I feel like I'm playing Dave very simply, um, and I think that is hopefully doing him justice. Um, not that I don't think he's a simple guy, but I, I think he, uh, he has very uh, real reactions to what happens and, uh, and to uh, the lack of interest from the character so how do you do it <laughs> tune out this enlightening event we decided to attend who says I'm tuning it out oh, you're reading Am I? maybe I am faking it you get the prettiest girl in the room come over and talk to me. Uh, well just based on the storyline alone it's not very predictable I think it's very easy to start watching um, a Hollywood film and be like, oh, well, obviously this guy's gonna end up with this girl and this person's gonna die and that guy did it and all that sort of stuff. This is more interesting. Uh, it doesn't follow a, a person meets person, like guy meets girl, girl loses girl, blah, blah, blah. Or even girl meets girl, girl loses girl, girl wins girl back. Um, it's it's much more complicated that, than that, um, even in just my storyline and that's like not even including, I think it's really um, ambitious not to just have like a lesbian film and like well it's about lesbians they're gonna meet and fall in love obviously. Babies are so just squishy. I never know what to do with them. Oh, I thought you wanted two kids. I do one day. Absolutely. I like them better when they're walking and talking. I like when you can do stuff with them. You know, Babies just sit there and eat and shit and cry. <laughs> More films like this in mainstream festivals and mainstream theaters and without the stereotypical like we were talking earlier you know the stereotypical gay person who's planted in the film just so that you know mainstream viewers can identify with it love you i won't have time to meet you later so can you just meet me down there sure you know where it is, right? Downtown, C'est la vie by the Sallys? Yeah, I know where it is. <sighs> Don't be so nervous. Walter's a good friend of mine. These guys aren't the money, he is. I hope you enjoy the film, and that it means something to you, that it touches you. We all put our hearts into it, and at the end of the day, it's just another film 
another way to help break down one more barrier for homophobia. I don't know, it just feels like I've known you a lot longer than I have. Maybe when you meet the right person, it's supposed to feel like that. I'm going through a really scary, life-altering thing right now, and I met you because of it. Four sex scenes, what else do you need to hear? <laughs> um, I think it's, it's going to be really different and fun, and there's so many cool locations, and uh, the story's awesome, and everyone involved is is so 100% on board and wants to make this an amazing movie so there's a lot of love that's gone into it and um, yeah it's gonna look good and it's and it, the script is awesome and the directors are ridiculously talented and all of the actors are hopefully good and uh, yeah it's it's gonna be fun and, and new and not not just like every other movie out there right now, so. With Route of Acceptance, I wanted to make a concept film. I love concept films. Uh, Memento, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Concept films, uh, Cloud Atlas, hello, amazing. Um, concept films are the best films. They're the films that I walk out of and I get goosebumps and I'm like, yep, this is why I dedicate my life to being a broke-ass filmmaker. Um, concept films. So I had already made a coming out story with Tweet Your Own on sale now. Um, anyways, and with a uh, road of acceptance, I wanted to bring to the lesbian community something that was above and beyond the coming out story. And so road of acceptance is about Ryan Stark and she gets her university acceptance letters. She gets three. She's accepted to all her places she applied to and the entire film is about um, what would happen in Ryan's life should she attend each of the schools um, so many different dramatic events unfold in her life I don't want to you know do any plot busters here but uh, three very different outcomes come in Ryan's life but because of this it's pretty cool because that Ryan then has three lesbian love interests actually She's with a dude, too, so there's there's four love interests in the movie. Um, and you just get to see Emily Alitalo, the actress who plays Ryan Stark. Whew, she'll blow you away. She's so great in this film. And you get to see her in so many different ways, alongside so many talented actors who play the other characters. Um, I'm just, I'm so lucky to have, to have cast who I cast. I really believe casting is the most important part of making a movie. A solid script helps and good camera work. We shot this on a red, which is super, super cool. Thanks to Dare 2 Productions, D Justin Dyke is the cinematographer. But uh, a good sound is also sometimes overlooked and, and, and excellent music. All these things matter, but I, I think if you're not, if you don't cast, if you don't, you know, if you don't take the time in the casting process, if you just, you know, take do 10 auditions, 10, 10 days of auditioning, and you just pick out of that because that's all your budget allowed for auditions, and if you're not really, really happy with your actors, that it, it sometimes really makes an independent film suffer. So I'm really lucky to have found such talented actors to be in route of acceptance. If you're a lesbian or a, or a part of the queer society, you'll love it, the movie. If you are a, what do we call a straight? Do we call them straight? Is that the current term we have? Um, if you're a, a current term straight person, you'll love it. If you're a person that likes um, a unique movie, uh, you will love it. Um, if you're not human, you probably won't like it. Um, so I would say that uh, you should go see it anyway. So go see it. Uh, I think it's just a wonderful film made by wonderful people in a passionate way. And it's meant um, not just to be a story. Um, it's meant uh, to give a message. And it's, uh, it's meant to change society. And it's a movie that is... It's made by somebody and it's made by a group of people who want to change the world film by film. Any help promoting 
the existence of Tweet Your Own Films would be greatly appreciated. There's no point in making awesome lesbian dramas for people to see and to change the world if, if nobody sees them or knows about them. So I think promotion is the most expensive and hardest thing, yet it can, in the time of social media, be the simplest thing. So join our Facebook page, share our YouTube trailers, um, make a donation to the site if you can afford to, and try to watch all films from legitimate VOD sources. It's a really hard time for independent filmmakers who don't have the money that the major motion picture distributors have to promote um, with all the illegal streaming going on. It's really hard to stay afloat, and I just want to keep being able to make awesome movies that you guys enjoy that matter and make a difference, because I like to think what I do makes a real difference. So anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you like Route of Acceptance to each your own, and I do. Thanks. I don't know what school I'm going to. Cory tells me you've been accepted into university. Which ones did you get into? I mean, how am I supposed to know what university is right for me? Eastern by far has the best props, but Davenport would mean living up north, which would be awesome. But now you have me thinking bullshit, like, what if my future wife's gonna be attending Robinson in fucking Toronto? I thought you didn't even believe in fate. Destiny is just an excuse for lazy people. Hard work equals good life, the end. I have to go. This is what I've been working towards my entire existence. Get good grades. Attend good school. Stuff. Be good writer. You just weren't writing for the right people. That's why you didn't do well. They contacted you. They like your script. They want you to intern. What's you writing on your arms? It's so I don't forget about stuff that I want to write about later. My arm's attached. Better chance I won't lose it. If they like it, I should be able to buy us a bigger house. Maybe build a basement apartment for your mom. Well, that wouldn't be much of an issue if you weren't so loud. As long as you're my subject. The alternate. Time goes by you just think that because you love me. Well, you don't anymore, do you? No, never. I do believe me is... Stark. Ryan Stark. I want to ask. Oh, look. I do see one. It's an ostrich giving birth to a hippopotamus. I'm an idiot. Yeah, you are. The cold stares from your sharp shoulder blades. Hot glares from your cheap shots of rays. What the fuck, Maddie? This is none of your business. Butt out. You know what, Ryan? It's my business. I just want to save. I don't care what you have to say. Just fucking leave now. Corey, can you please just forgive me? Nothing. I have an essay due tomorrow. It's to do yet. Do you think I'm an idiot? I can't do this anymore. Keep trying. Okay? Just keep trying. But you're happy. Completely. So you're happy? Yes. I'm ecstatic. Do I make you happy? Different people take different amounts of time to be comfortable with their sexuality. Don't apologize for needing to take it slow. Straight one, you're gay the next. So exciting. Well, at least it is if you're willing to go with it. The constant human need to rationalize every thought and emotion severely brings us all down. He cannot come unless he is wearing a wig. What color is it? Orange, with little ringlets. <laughs> it's not relaxing as much as you break my poker pieces, so if you're gonna do it like that, don't help. Sorry. I was just trying to make you laugh. Mm, not funny. You know what days I'm off work. So call me, okay? Will do. 
You asked my parents permission to marry me. You never told me that. Well, I did. I guess a sweep, but would you just not have asked me if they had said no? Because ultimately it has nothing to do with them. No, you're right. I wasn't going to call her. Then can we? Guys. Let's go to sleep then. I would, but... For what? You're ovulating. Am I? Alright, just let me finish this chapter. Aren't you gonna leave me a number? I really don't think that's something either of us are interested in. So I don't see the point of going through the motions. Fair enough. All that's gonna matter is that the baby's healthy and provided for, and you can't do that if you don't have a job. Trevor's already painting the room, and I'm not even pregnant yet. I oh, should be happy to have a husband so excited about having kids. What color did you paint the room? Light green. And that way it'll be suitable for either a, a boy or a girl. I wanted to paint the room baby blue. I like blue, and I doubt that the baby's gonna care. So she's looking at me. She's probably looking at you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, why don't we just clear that up? Excuse me, sweetheart! Damn, no. Sweetheart! Damn. Are you... Checking out this fine young specimen of a woman right here, or are you staring at a fat, middle-aged, and obviously gay man? Hey, I'm Casey. Do you have a minute? I was just about to go on my break. I'm not a big fan of authority, so if I could be my own boss, I would. Problem is, if you fail, you lose all your own money. True, but where's the fun if there's no risk? Anna's got herself one loyal friend. I swear, lately, she has to see you more than I do. Oh, Anna needs me right now. Breakups are hard. I'd ask you to come with us, but you know how it is, girl talk. You know I love you, right? So my sexual past is concerning you. Because you know I, I would never cheat on you. I haven't even thought about another woman since we met. Where? Were you? It's none of your business. I just don't want to make an irrational decision without thinking it through from every angle. Apparently this, us, is meaning a lot more to me a lot quicker than it is for you. So this is it. I don't get to see you again. Please just do me that one favor. Be patient. I just need a bit more time. Okay. I'll leave if Jess wants me to leave. You want me to leave? And I think this is one of the things that particularly irritates the religious right, because they're seeing more and more people celebrating gay and lesbian couples. And they were not the demons that they're trying to make us out to be. There's absolutely no reason not to marry them. That's why I marry same-sex couples. And they were all long-term relationships. And I'm getting married in September. Say to your spouse the night before you're going to be married, are you ready to die tomorrow? You know, there were bomb threats, there were death threats, the minister wore a bulletproof vest. I don't think it's so much an issue of including gay people in the marriage law as it is an issue of removing the marriage law from Christian context. I didn't see anything wrong with a union and calling it unions and having a separate category for same-sex couples because I thought that by having your own category it allows you to create your own institution and your own trends and your own traditions as opposed to mimicking heterosexual ones. I represented the Metropolitan Community Church of Toronto in the Ontario same-sex marriage litigation and in the Supreme Court of Canada on the reference regarding the proposed change to the definition of marriage. I was ordained in the Roman Catholic Church in 1986 and then left active ministry within the Roman Catholic Church in 1990, primarily because of the Roman Catholic Church's stand on gay and lesbian issues and life experience. All your relatives don't want to come. <laughs> they don't want to see two women kissing. In growing up gay or lesbian in our society, even in a more understanding society today, 
growing up gay or lesbian can still be an unbelievably difficult situation. How can you turn your sister gay? That upsets me because my parents think I'll turn my sister gay too, but they couldn't turn me straight. Yeah. And then it was, that's disgusting, you're a complete shame to our family. Grade 7, gym class, I actually got kicked out of the gym change room because they found out I was a lesbian. I wouldn't say negative so much as non-existent. Being gay was something that was never mentioned. And sometimes it's really beautiful to watch folks who don't define themselves as queer who are out there at the forefront carrying that flag with as much vigor as everybody else. I can't imagine denying somebody the same right that I have to legally marry my husband. The sexual orientation is as given as anything else in life. I personally am left-handed and uh, that's just the way I am. And for someone to push me around or make it illegal for me to write with my left hand would be ludicrous. Now you can see in the New York Times, in the uh, wedding, you know, the engagement announcement, same-sex couples on the same pages. The issue of welcoming gays and lesbians into every institution uh, as full and whole human beings of equal status with others, that really, I think, is a civil rights question of our age. I mean, you can't say someone's half equal. You know, either we say in our society that we have a charter of rights and freedoms that protects everyone or it doesn't. My parents are in their 80s and they think it's about time uh, that we got married and they keep saying the clock is ticking and that they'd like to see us get married. We still wonder whether or not it's um, a necessary institution for gay and lesbian people. I think people should have the right to be married. Um, I worry about it becoming a requirement to have relationships legitimized. And I struggle with the fact that we're looking at uh, recreating um, a right that has been historically very oppressive. I'm not comfortable licensing my dogs. I only do it because they might get lost. Why would I want to license my partner? I'd be happier if I could just bless couples of whatever gender uh, who were already married somewhere else in the city hall or by just of the peace. But since that's not the case, uh, and since this is marriage is an institution that confers privilege, rights, uh, it seems to me very important that all people in Canadian society have access to that institution. You just want equal rights, you're not equal. But let me tell you something, when you're standing on this side and you're saying, I just want to be with my wife, at the hospital bed or have the same rights or not have to worry about somebody else coming in if some, something happens to her and making decisions. You know nothing about her. I do. Inclusive in society to be a part of that. It's like I'm not, you know, in a checkbox when I go along and say, well, are you married, single, and other. I think it's going to make it a lot easier for, for kids to come out. You know, whether they're dreaming about it, a boy or a girl, and whether they're a boy or a girl, every young child can now lie in bed dreaming about a wedding that they might have if, if they so desire. I was either going to have to choose between being gay or being religious and couldn't make being gay go away, so. The gay scene, it's obviously a subculture. It's, it's kind of buried underneath these layers of, of stereotypes. Who's the man, you know? Uh, people ask that all the time. Who takes out the garbage? Well, the kids do. I'm a good sister. I'm a good aunt, I'm an excellent worker. Like, you know, all of these things define who I am well in advance of, well, who do I sleep with? I actually think we need to see more physical affection between gay and lesbian couples on the streets, in the theater. We don't see enough of it, we're not used to it, so people think it's odd. Isn't that weird? There have been discussions in legal circles and in parliamentary circles around having a kind of two tiered marriage system where you have domestic partnerships and then you have legal marriage and they're different so that you have a little apartheid system I like to say you know where you know uh, you know queer folk are over here in their little you know ghetto and and straight folk get to celebrate marriage um, but this is ridiculous I was scared to be gay and I had issues with gay and everything was gay and I couldn't look gay and I couldn't dress gay and I couldn't talk gay everyone's gonna know I'm gay and then I had a problem with other gay people because I had internalized homophobia. This is the part where I want to declare that you are now wife and wife. Doesn't everybody grow up dreaming about getting married? Living happily ever after. No. Marriage is good. I want to get married.